Okay, and we're recording. Okay. Oh, meeting to order, roll call. Mayor Wiggins. Here. Mayor Potem Smith. Here. Councilmember Davies. Here. Councilmember Hecke. Councilmember Covencourt. Here. Councilmember Hecke is absent. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask you to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance that Mrs. Covencourt will lead us in. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Are there any audience communications at this time? Are you thinking or what? <laughs> Uh, my name is Carl Garrick. I live at 702 Anita. And this don't work. Okay. Hey guys, I talked to Craig the other day, and you had that day. Uh, the budget is great. I know we're getting a lot more tax money, and I guess we're getting new employees, which is all good. But it's called waving a flag. And that is, who does me and the rest of my people in the community see is the road and the guys on the street department filling potholes. And that's called waving the flag because that's the only one they see really and truly. You know, yeah, I understand we're getting a couple new policemen and all that new employee, that's great. But we also need to improve waving the flag of the guys who are out filling potholes in our city. That's who we see, and with the extra money from, and I realize Walmart is going to give us a few extra dollars in tax money, and that's going to help. And people talk bad about Walmart and all that, but when you can say, hey, look at the guy waving the flag that's out there filling your potholes, that's who they see, and that's going to have to be important. And I want to think, you know, consider that in your budget that this is a cut, these are who they see. Okay? And it's called Wave the Flag. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other comments from the audience? All right. Um, I will turn it over to the City Manager, Finance Director report. Thank you, Mayor Wiggins. I just had a brief opening remark. I want to thank the council for coming in today at this early hour. Uh, we live and breathe our budget every day. Not just tonight, but every day. We've had a balanced budget as long as I've been at the city and, and most all the employees here. We have amazing employees <coughs> doing amazing things for our city, up and down, left and right. Um, tonight, I'm gonna let the numbers speak for themselves. $22 million overall budget nearly and it's balanced and we're going to go through that line by line i want everybody to understand where the money's coming from where the money's being spent our capital projects and our goals for the next five years so very very proud of this budget and i'm going to turn it over to hannah chong our chief financial officer and we're going to go through a powerpoint presentation for you we'd like you to um, at any point, stop and ask questions. We want to make certain that you understand exactly what's going on. It's rather simple, money in, money out. This is how much is coming in, this is where we get it from, and the money out, this is what we're spending it on. Great people doing great work. So I'm going to turn it over to Hannah Chung. Can I start with you? Yeah, go ahead. Bring Ashley, do you know anything about my hat? Did it get repaired from uh, Mariana? She's been trying to get a hold of you. She needs to be able to log in. We oh, I thought I, I, I texted to her. Okay. Oh, okay. I don't know. I haven't been much in the office today. So. Okay. Thank you. I apologize. Thank you. I get through one. But you have what you, what you need on your screen? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. okay. We're good. Okay. I just can't. Okay. I just can't. So, um, Thank you. the first item, instead of before we jump into our PowerPoint and all the numbers, and uh, each department heads will uh, provide the highlight of this budget of their own department. So, I'm going to start with the finance department for 2019-20 budget. The finance department, the, the budget is rather uh, very simple and very small. 
and the 73% of the total finance budget uh, is from the personnel costs. As you will find, you will see the number uh, towards during this presentation, finance budget is 325,000 approximately. In 1920, there are two special budget items are added, you know, above and beyond of, you know, office expenses and this and that. The first one is $20,000 for special consulting service. So I budgeted this amount to have a um, expert to help us to develop that policy uh, creation and eventually this um, later and at the real council meeting um, that you will see the agenda item. The next item on the, uh, in my budget is 10000 for the purchase of uh, purchase order module for our spring group uh, software. So, Thank you, Hannah. What I'd like to do is have each department head give an opening statement. <coughs> so that's Hannah's statement for our finance department. And next, I'm going to turn to Chief Prager for the Tehachapi Police Department. I'm going to let him give us an opening statement. Good, good afternoon, uh, Chief Prager. I'm at the Tehachapi Police Department. The department currently consists of 26 personnel within five divisions. We have our administrative division, our field operations division, communications and records division, investigations division, and our code enforcement division. With the current anticipated development within our city, the demands upon our department and its personnel are quickly accelerating. It's imperative that the police department be prepared to meet these demands by responsibly increasing our staff and improving our efficiency. My proposed budget addresses responsible growth of the department and includes the addition of one police officer, one police technician, and the transition of my part-time code enforcement officer to full-time status for the upcoming budget year. The men and women of the Happy Police Department are committed to providing a safe community and a high quality of life for all residents, businesses, and visitors by providing responsive, professional law enforcement services. This proposed budget will support my department's efforts to achieve these goals. Thank you, Chief Perry. We're going to come to Mr. Marsh, our Public Works Director. Thank you. Uh, so Public Works is made up of six different areas, as you um, probably know. Uh, those six areas are streets and roads, water, wastewater, uh, city facilities, landscaping, and our city fleet. Uh, streets and roads includes the uh, maintenance of um, nearly 600 street lights, about 150 miles of paved streets, maintenance and uh, replacement of all the city curb gutters and sidewalks within the city limits and city-owned parking lots. The water department includes uh, six domestic operating wells, five water storage tanks, uh, curry booster pump station, the water distribution system and, and uh, about 3,000 water service connections. Our wastewater includes our sewer collection system, our stormwater collection system, wastewater treatment plant, uh, what we call our borrow pit, and a reclamation system at the airport. Our facilities includes 11 city buildings and seven city parks. Our landscaping includes all of our downtown landscaping, the, uh, most of the city buildings and parking lots include some level of landscaping, all of our street medians, and our landscape and lighting districts. Our fleet department includes the uh, maintenance and operation of nearly 100 vehicles and pieces of equipment, and that includes all oil changes, tire changes, tire repairs, uh, batteries, break, any other breakdowns, and um, regular maintenance of those items. So <clears throat> there's a lot involved in the, in the Public Works uh, budget, and we'll get into the details of that. But uh, in general, this budget that you're going to see tonight is um, in support of our continued improvement and uh, development of the Public Works Department and in alignment with um, improving the level of service that we provide to the citizens of Tennessee. Thank you, Mr. Marsh. Now we're going to move to Jay Slosser, our Development Services Manager, and he'll give us an opening statement for his departments. Yeah. 
Council, um, my department includes the building, engineering, and planning departments for the city of Tashby. In short, uh, we've talked about this before. If it, it's building in the city of Tashby, it runs through us for, for permitting, review, and approval, whether it be um, public sector improvements like road improvements um, or improvements to the water sewer network or private improvements such as Walmart is the easy example to use these days. Um, the only thing I'll say about our budget uh, this year, or a couple things, is, is that uh, we budgeted, uh, we have a lot of the standard operating components. We go through a lot of paper and staples, as you can well imagine. So that's certainly budgeted there. But in addition to that, this year, we'll continue to focus on the things that we need to do to manage development in the city. So we're budgeting for an update to the engineering standards, fairly comprehensive one uh, that's needed. The last comprehensive update was in 2008, as well as a comprehensive review of our sign codes. Uh, those are both budgeted and then will include consultant assistance this year um, as examples. Um, as a departmental goal, I've spent the last few years and will continue to do so, do so this year to self-fund the largest portion of this budget that we possibly can through the use of the fees that we charge the public. And, and the reason for that is simple, which is the existing resident here shouldn't, um, in my opinion, and, and certainly it's up to the council's discretion, but shouldn't be paying the bill for, for covering all the expenses associated with monitoring and managing the growth of the city. Instead, those who are benefiting from that growth, i.e. the developer, should be paying that bill. So you'll see in the budget tonight, we've uh, done a good job, and, and this year's budget reflects this, uh, yet another uh, sizable step forward in self-funding those components of what we do. Um, and so this budget, in my opinion, I'm happy to, uh, to say that it, uh, that it strongly supports what our goals are as a department and uh, what you all's goals are, at least as we understand them, um, for the direction of this city. So happy to present it to you tonight. Thank you, Jamie. Next, we're going to move to Corey Costello. Corey will uh, assist us at City Hall for general administration and economic development. So Corey has an opening statement for you. There's a couple of departments to touch on economic development as well as our refuse fund as an enterprise fund we did at the moment. But start with economic development, the goals of economic development include utilizing our changing economic profile uh, in our community, establishing processes and initiatives, maximize investment from new existing and potential business owners. So we balance private benefit with public impact. We're coordinating our efforts with other departments, including planning, engineering, communications, and the police department. Uh, this budget you will see allows us to stay engaged with the stakeholders in and around our community, addressing needs in local economic clusters to support job growth and the economic opportunities for the residents of Tehachapi. Uh, those partnerships include the Greater Tashby Economic Development Council, the Greater Tashby Chamber of Commerce, the Current Economic Development Corporation, Greater Animal Valley Economic Alliance, and the East Current Economic Alliance. Our community promotion efforts are centered around developing and maintaining a strong ecosystem for our businesses and investors to succeed, creating partnerships amongst existing businesses and continuing with an active role in the community. So this budget allows us to continue to market to Ashby as a great place for investment and quality of life to pursue investment opportunities that will benefit the citizens of our city and ensure the success of these ventures for years to come. On the refuse side, as a fund that is a enterprise fund, this budget being presented reflects contract services with waste management under a system in which the city bills for refuse and recycling services. Majority of those funds collected are paid back to waste management for contract for their services. Additionally, a small percentage is maintained by the city and placed into reserves. Those reserve accounts, which you'll see, are small in nature. They do allow for unforeseen issues, additional services needed, and ensuring our contract hauler has the resources necessary implement the programs being mandated by the state of California and they are uh, growing as the years uh, continue. In 18 months since waste management took over operations from Ben's sanitation, uh, per the terms of their buyout agreement, waste management has implemented curbside recycling in the city on uh, commercial organics recycling is mandated by state law. So two new programs in less than two years with our new contract hauler. So as the relationship continues to mature and waste management establishes a new level of operation with the technology they use, uh, that sort of thing, the city continues to work with them addressing concerns and challenges that came uh, seen in the company acquisition of that type. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Costello. Next, we're going to move to uh, Ms. Whitmore, our administrative manager and our airport manager, and an opening statement from Ms. Whitmore. Good afternoon, everyone. On the airport side, as a general goal for us is to maintain a safe and have a well-maintained airport that has a runway that's always open. Um, as you know, over the last year, um, we've continued improving communications with tenants, which has gone really well. 
Um, you'll see in this budget, um, we're looking at uh, the funds to rehabilitate and relocate the south side parallel taxiway, starting this year with the design. Um, we're also looking at uh, uh, funding a new fuel terminal, as our new one, our current one, will be no longer be maintained by the, uh, uh, the manufacturer. Um, on the IT side, our goals are to continue to become more proactive rather than reactive, um, and actively stay up to date with new technologies. Um, we are improving connectivity, our hope is to improve connectivity between uh, the city and the wastewater treatment plant um, as they tend to go down. So that's our big goal this year, with some new um, point to point radios. Um, we're also looking at a new camera server for the PD to increase capacity and continuing upgrades for PCs, uh, including uh, tough boats uh, in the patrol car cars. Uh, new uh, tough boats rather than older refurbished ones. On the city clerk side, um, as you know, we maintain records, um, things along those lines. We're going to continue training. We have uh, some new girls still there going through their training uh, towards their uh, certified municipal clerk uh, certificates. Um, and just so we can keep up to date, there's a lot of laws and regulations we have to keep up with on that end. And then uh, otherwise, the general, general government side, customer service, and we're always want to go that way. Thank you, Ms. Whitmore. We're going to go speak uh, here from Mr. Key Budge in regards to our communications effort this past year and goals for next year. Good afternoon. Key Budge, Community Engagement Specialist. Our goal is to enhance our communication outreach and transparency. In this budget, my position goes from part-time to full-time. We'll increase our award-winning video series, continue community efforts like the Neighborhood Improvement Project, Coffee with a Cop, Coffee with a Mayor, National Night Out, and we're going to start online webinars for the public. We're going to train instead of the old public meetings, we're going to do it in a webinar fashion, similar to a lot of the ways that we get our training today uh, in the workplace for educational purposes. Our communication efforts also have been modeled by other cities in Kern County in the creation of, in similar ways in how they talk to the public. They're following what we do. This budget reflects those goals. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fudge. Now we're gonna start with Hannah Chung, and you have your packet in front of you. So thank you to all the department heads for your opening statement, and we'll start with our PowerPoint presentation. I'll remind you to please follow along and engage. Stop us, ask questions, comments. We want, to, we want this to be a very interactive process for you. So you want questions as we... You, you can save them to the end. We're gonna go over the general fund and then the enterprise funds. So general fund first and then water, wastewater, so on and so forth. So you can save them to the end of that particular section or ask as we go along. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Um, like Greg has mentioned, this is the budget that a lot of effort has been put in. And this is the longest budget workshop that we did amongst our staff because we have to adjust it substantially in order to make it balanced. So overall, uh, citywide revenue, the total uh, revenue budget is 22,752,000. And in this particular presentation, I am not going to bore you with lots of numbers because once I start reading so many numbers, they get all mixed, means nothing. So, um, so as you can see, the general fund is the, um, the, 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 the most, uh, the biggest uh, fund amongst all uh, many city funds. So general fund takes 35%, sewer fund is number two, and a revenue wide, and which it takes 15%, and capital project 14, and water 15%. <coughs> and move on to the next slide, to a pie chart that shows the revenue budget. Now, um, by looking at this pie chart, you can see the biggest portion is the debt, the green, which is general fund, and in here, this one explains the whole, every single the funds there is under, um, this, under the city of Dajabi umbrella. And so number two is uh, the sewer fund. And so I just wanted to let you know there's a little pie that has 1%, says LLD on the left and top left side. It's a landscape lighting district. This is the, the district that we collect special tax from certain uh, the track homes, and then we spend the money for that um, for districts for that districts landscape and lighting um, you know purpose. 
And then uh, we're going to move on to, unless you have any questions on this picture, we're going to move on to the next slide. This one uh, will uh, show you the composition of total citywide expenditure budget, which is 21736000 So overall, and the revenue was 22752 and the expenditure is 21736 so over a million dollar in a citywide the surplus that we will recognize if we, um, you know, based on this budget story. So of course, in the expenditure size, general fund is number one, and un un unlike the revenue side, sewer uh, takes the <coughs> to on an expenditure side, and this will be explained when we go, you know, um, talk about sewer fund. And number three is the capital project, number four is the water. Refuse is uh, 1.4 million, it's like, it's a fifth. However, um, uh, revenue is high on refu refuse side and so is expenditures because this is substantial contract amount should be paid to waste management. So you will see that down the road. Next slide, please. So um, this is the pie chart. And I'm not gonna go all, over everything since I, um, I did with the, you know, the table. So, you know, of course this, the blue is the general fund. And number two is sewer, and number three is capital projects, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And if I move too fast, please stop me, let me know. But just, just to be clear, so the table that you're looking at is the same as the pie chart. It's just shown in a different format. Some people like pie charts, some people like charts. So we're showing the same data in two <laughs> J likes pie charts. <laughs> so it's the same data just shown in two different ways. Okay? Next slide. <laughs> so this is a, a, the highlight of 2019-20 citywide personnel um, change. So uh, citywide 3.6%, that's the CPI of, that we used November of prior year. We used the same month every year, that's what we should do. Uh, that was 3.6%, and this is also applied for um, the water and sewer and um, for uh, annual increase. And so 3.6% cost of living increase is applied in this budget. And uh, the next item is police officers, number of pay staff, we reduced it from 15 to five steps. So what we did was we did from, from top, <coughs> right, top, the 19 step, and we went down 5% reduction. So. And Chief, would you like to weigh in on this, uh, the, the actual logic behind reducing it from 15 steps down to five? Sure, absolutely. So uh, pretty much industry standard, five to six steps is generally where they're at. Um, I conducted a salary survey and, and looked at our salaries across the board. Uh, we were in pretty good shape on our top end. We were way out of balance on our low end. We were, our starting pay was significantly lower than a lot of our surrounding agencies and our competition. Um, so in order to remain competitive in our industry and attract quality personnel, we need to bring our starting salary up considerably. And uh, the simplest way to do that um, was to uh, reduce us down to five steps. Thank you. Chief, I have a question. What is the time frame for those five steps? Busy for a starting officer to where he will be at top eight. Well, that uh, depends on performance. We're still a, a merit-based system and have the ability to uh, obtain a merit increase annually uh, based upon their performance. So uh, realistically, someone could be there within five years, five years, five steps. Um, but uh, they could also remain at those lower steps if that performance isn't uh, uh, where it needs to be to get those increases. So you do annual review, annual reviews of each officer? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank All you. employees. All employees. All employees. Okay. Thank you. So, um, and next item is we added three additional full-time employees into this budget. Those are uh, lead landscape maintenance, <coughs> and the police, one police officer, and one police technician. And so there are two positions uh, transferred from part-time to full-time. Number one is community engagement specialist, and number two is code enforcement officer. 
and there are two new positions created. This is not necessarily additional employees to the total number of employee count. However, this is two new positions created are a deputy public works director. As you can see, public works is huge, including water, sewer, and public works. And, um, and the, the next position is public works analyst. A question? What is a public works analyst do? <laughs> that is, well, I'm going to answer that. Yeah, I was going to comment on that if, you, if I could. So, uh, public works analyst is uh, not a new position. We already have somebody filling that position. It was, uh, it's a new job description within public works. So, uh, this isn't an additional person, just to be clear. It's really an, an administrative assistant with, um, on, uh, uh, with some additional capabilities to help plan and organize the work within public works. Uh, the ability to uh, utilize our computer maintenance system, um, to plan jobs, do some procurement, some contracting, things like that. Okay. Uh, that's currently being filled by Roxanne Davis. Okay, thank you. I would also like to point out that our, our lead landscape maintenance person um, is listed as a, an additional person. That position was actually uh, vacant for, for a number of years. Um, it was previously filled by Jerry Ingram. Jerry was promoted into a public works supervisor position a few years ago. So this is to, to fill that role. Um, okay. Okay. So next slide is just for your understanding, I included a um, little table that has total number of employees. And as you can see, um, the police department will have for the highest, and number two is public works for and sewer, and number three is development services, and the finance and admin has same six uh, full-time employees. And from uh, the, I just make a note that from mid-year 1819, the current the full-time employee number of full-time employees 63, and uh, we are um, in 1920 budgeted number of full-time employees 70. So in this um, seven number of seven uh, increase is uh, five additional, uh, which is you know one police officer and. Uh, wastewater operator and five and the two part-time from to full-time. So from part-time to full-time so also add to full-time employee numbers. And from 1920 to 2021 there are three additional. There are those are two officers and one surgeon. And from 2021 to 21 22 in addition is two officers. So two full time. So unless there is any questions, so I mean the competition of this part time is the, the front desk and the public works are the majority and there is one um, police department. Just a question. Uh, I don't see a fire service contract anywhere in the budget. It, it's here. Oh, it's, it's up and coming. So we'll okay. show you. Because I, we have I didn't see, did I miss it in the pie chart? Um, it, well, it's under general fund. Okay. And so it's finance, it's revenue, and expenditures under general fund. And we'll get there in a minute. Okay. So that's a great question. Thank you. It'll be covered under general fund, then it's coming up. Gotcha. Right? Thank you. Right there, in fact. <laughs> Um, so, as you can see it, um, in the pie chart, in um, the major, uh, the, one of the biggest funds in all you know, uh, city funds uh, is general fund. 2019-20 general fund revenue is uh, 7.9 billion and some change. Um, so in general fund revenue, number one, revenue is sales tax. Number two is vehicle license fee, which is red. And then number three is property tax, which is green. And then TOT, transient occupancy tax, that's a hotel tax, um, is number four. So um, in here, you're gonna be able to, uh, let's see, it's, the, it's just a revenue side, so it doesn't show the fire. fire. And uh, we will move on to the next slide. And in this 1920 general fund revenue, I listed top 10 uh, revenue source. It starts with sales tax VLF, uh, which is vehicle license fee, which then takes 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%, 16%
16.7% in property tax, and TOT is close to 10%, and development services revenue is 9%. A lot of development services, that, that their work is reimbursed, so it's a lot of reimbursement um, revenue. And then um, the police grants and revenue rents and other you know, miscellaneous revenue takes uh, rank number six. So top 10, total top 10 will uh, take the 98.6% of total general fund revenue. So if you say it's almost 100%, it's not that you know big exaggeration. So for your understanding, on the next slide, I listed what other revenue sources are. So these are, you know, passport processing, 40,000. Miscellaneous revenue is like a lot of 15% um, of any um, admin fee is added to miscellaneous revenue, and so on and so forth. Um, and then we will move on to the next slide. So um, in the next slide, I, we did a comparison between this, fis this current fiscal year. Since this fiscal year is not done, we're still working off of adjusted budget, which we council adopted during the mid-year. That's 1819 budget versus 1920. So in 1920, uh, from 1819 budget, we will see sales tax 163,000 increase. So actually, number one increase is development services revenue 193,000. The, the number two increase is property tax, and number three is sales tax. All these three taxes are development related. So, um, so you know, we all one when when we have more development, you know, one it increase one set one revenue, and then so you know, it'll increase another one. So that's what it is. And please grant. So a substantial increase there is because um, when we receive. Um, restitution from code enforcement, we have like savings accounts. We don't capture that as a revenue. We capture that in a separate bank, you know, it's separate like little pocket. But because we are going to hire part-time code enforcement to go full-time, we are using restitution money. So not general fund revenue is not putting the money out for that. Next slide. For your understanding, um, I listed top six uh, general fund revenue. As you can see, sales tax is way up there, and uh, number two is more vehicle license fee, and then number three is pro property tax. The, and the lowest is a business license, but business license still makes top six revenue. Next slide. And so now uh, I will go one by one major uh, general fund revenue and how it look. Um, what it looked like the last past five years, including this current year, and then what it's gonna, how we project it for the next five years. So you can see the 10 year trend um, in this graph. So in 2019-20, um, property tax revenue, we budgeted 1.2 million. And then if you look at the graph, you will see the dip in mid-18-19, um, and it's not a dip, it's like, it's status quo pretty much same as 17-18, but because 18-19 is still adjusted, adjusted budget, we will not go find out until the end of June, until June is, you know, um, June 30 is done. So, and then as you can see it, so we are looking at next five years, average growth is 5%. Next slide. If I go too fast, stop me any time, please. The next um, item on general fund revenue is sales tax. Of course, as you have seen from the previous um, data, sales tax is the number one um, highest revenue in general fund. Yeah. So we budgeted in 1920, 2.9 million. And so we are looking at anticipated average annual growth for the next five years is 4.5. And I don't think this is way too aggressive, but then we always want to take very conservative um, you know, measure when we project next five years. Because when we budget our expenditure uh, budget, we do it based on the revenue. So we never, we really don't know what to do. 
and then you know get big disappointment or a big disaster in the next you know, so many years. And in this graph, you will see big dip in 1617. That is because of the, uh, the gas price drop. Mm -hmm. the, the highest portion in our sales tax is from gasoline, as you can see it, from a uh, truck stop and from pilot. Mm -hmm. And so when gas, depending on uh, the, the, where the gas price is at, our general fund gets affected big time. Mm -hmm. so. However, um, with hopefully the bond market will kind of smooth it down the road. So having different market in our um, city is the, the different mix of uh, the businesses is a good idea. And so we are gonna move on to the next item, which is TOT. This is a hotel tax. So the city of Patrick charges 8% of hotel tax, which is the lowest. <coughs> So when you go, I just had a conference in LA, their hotel tax is 14%. And on top of it, they have additional taxes. So when I calculated, it was 16%. So that's very substantial. But in our town, our hotel tax is very low. And so budget is 1920. Uh, TOT tax is 763,000. And uh, so we are anticipating average 3.8 8% growth in the next five years. But this may change, and I think we have a couple of hotels in our development pipeline. If that happens, that this number may change. So the next uh, revenue that I would like to talk about is vehicle license fee. Vehicle license fee is the, the, the tax we pay when we pay everybody, whoever owns vehicle, we pay DMV fees. And portion of the DMV fees comes to the city and it, it gets allocated per capita. And having our prison as a, you know, as annexed area for the city, that really helps for road, especially a lot of road money and such as VLF. So uh, in VLF, it's the top two, that's the high, second highest revenue in general fund. Uh, we are budgeting 1,323,000 for next year. So anticipated average growth for the next five years is 2.6%. And I, I consider this is very conservative. We're not being too excited with uh, the growth in uh, vehicle license. But if Jay, as, as Jay mentioned, if there are a lot of um, houses that are being built, being built, and if we have more population added to our city, this will go up substantially. For, and then we will now, that will wrap up um, the revenue. If you have any questions on the revenue, unless, unless you have a question, I'm gonna move on to expenditures. So in 1920, general fund expenditures, total budgeted amount is 7.9 million. So biggest portion of this 7.9 million is personnel costs. And as you all know, um, this city um, is service organization, we provide service. So we don't sell any product, we don't manufacture any product. It's the service. So it is natural to see highest percentage um, in the expenditure is for the personnel cost. Number two item is um, the operating expenditures. You know, 2.2 million, 27%. And number three is um, capital uh, purchase and debt service payments. Next slide. You will see this pie chart by department. So um, the police department will pay 49%, and that's number one. Uh, number two is development services, uh, 1.2 million. And number three is um, public works. And number four is general government. So and then you will, we will move on to the next item general fund expenditures. So what I did is I broke down, this is the top three in <coughs> total general fund expenditures. We categorize in three big categories. Personnel, operating expenditures, and capital project. As you can see, personnel has the highest um, expenditures. So next slide, please. 
So this next slide will um, show you the bullet points of what is in this expenditure budget. Can so you go back one to the person. Go back. I just the, nine on the personnel. The, yeah, oh. that one there. Just a, a quick note is that uh, even though we've added a few employees, it's not a very steep return. It's fairly flat. Mm -hmm. yes. And if you look at other cities, it's jagged because they have periods where they add employees when the money's there and then they have layoffs. Mm -hmm. It's up and down, up and down. Where ours is over a long period of time, very smooth. So we don't have layoffs. It's everything is. I think that's kind of an right, important Absolutely. Right. Even during the recession, we did not cut services or lay anybody off. We held our own, and that's because we can, we budget conservatively. And when we make the decision collectively to hire, whether it's a police officer or a public works employee, it's for the long haul. Yeah. And that's really the debate. And we're not interested in, in hiring and letting people go. Yeah. It's for the health of the city and then the health of the person in the family. Absolutely. Thank you. Sorry. That's very good. Okay, so um, next item, the bullet points of general fund expenditures. So we have budgeted 30,000 for July 4th, 45 for community, and 46 for annual control. And the councilman Smith asked about the fire service. So 17,909. That's one year. It seems very low, but that plus um, 440,000, the city is not collecting from uh, the fire tax from the property tax. It's a pass through. It is a pass through, yes. Okay, so we're basically for the contract uh, for what what we're getting from the county in addition to the pass through 17,000. Right, so we allow the county of Kern access to our property tax, which is $440,000, which is the fire tax. And then we pay an additional amount of our general fund, 17909 This is an extremely good contract price. It's a, it's a great deal for the city of Tashby, our residents, and the county of Kern. We have a great relationship with the county of Kern Fire Department. They have stations 12 right here in town. And then backing up a little bit with animal control, $46,000. That's a contract with uh, county of Kern Animal Control. <coughs> And we do have a, a contract with them where they provide some patrol and then some pickup of, of animals from time to time. Just not skunks. Yeah, just not skunks. <laughs> so one thing I can tell you for sure is it may not last as a eighteen thousand a year. So you know this it, this last five year budget of the contract has been very excellent. And so the next um, and then. We have uh, 400,000 engineering standard upgrade and 200 um, the engineering, the reimbursable engineering expenses. So, um, and then we move on to the next slide. So, the bullet points continues here. Um, in this, so we have police equipment and police overtime, and also the loan payment that we have two outstanding loan from general fund. So it is um, included as a um, the bullet point, and then. Uh, the lease payment for the vehicles and the wireless um, P2P, maybe you know, Ashley can tell what the P2P upgrade means. Point to point. <laughs> yes, there we go. Point to point. Then, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> and then 241000 for computer maintenance contract services. So next slide will show you the good news in general fund. Mm -hmm. So general fund, I'm sure you are all aware, general fund being the major fund for the city and this, when general fund is healthy, the city is healthy. And we have been, um, you know, I'm very proud to, to say that our general fund is very healthy. And I'm, I'm sure you remember that when Oliver was here, he even mentioned that our general fund reserve is very healthy. So if you look at the yellow line, the revenue versus expenses, so you don't see any bracket. That means every year we're making um, you know, the positive and, and numbers, so this much money will be added to our uh, fund balance in general account. And the, one of the most, another important number is very bottom, cash balance. So what I do is every year I do project this is the, the cash balance, not, it's not, cash, not to get confused between fund balance. Fund balance and cash balance, I 
see it as totally different because the sand balance includes all the loans that we gave out, all the advances the city gives out. Although it's all receivables, but that's not true green cash. So if you look at, um, at the end of 2019-20, we are anticipating $3.6 million of cash balance in general fund. And, and then the, the so on and so forth, and then at the end of fifth year, um, we are looking at 3.4. And you will say, why is it being less than our first year of the budget? Although you have every year you have a positive number, it's because the advances, and you will see that, advances then, and all those that reserve the city put. So in this cash flow of 3.6 million, that, is, that does not include city's emergency uh, reserve. So we usually have about a million dollar emergency reserve. So if I add that back in, it's gonna close to 4.6 million. So we're gonna go to the next slide, and you will see why when um, ending equity, if you look at 1920 ending equity, you will see it's, it's the blue line below the yellow. We have eight points, close to $2 million. Why we only have 3.6 million? It's because, um, because of the, the next sheet, the items that you will show in the next sheet. So the first column, the blue the column, is the balance. So from that balance and all the next um, numbers will be, if it's positive, that's an addition to this balance. If it's negative, it's a reduction to the balance. So in here, the very first line item is community fund balance reserve. This is for the emergency. So every year we have, um, you know, GASB 54 council approves that the emergency amount. So every year we, we will be adding certain amount and you will see it, um, 192 for 2018-19 and 134 for 19-20. Airport, at the end of this fiscal year, airport will have zero outstanding loan only because general fund is subsidizing it. So instead of writing it off after 10 years later, one point something million dollars, we decided to, we decided to do operating transfer because that's, that is the true picture. Mm -hmm. Because unless airport has, has a capability of paying it back in the future, we are not allowed to put it as a loan for, you know, based on generally accepted accounting principle. So with that, um, the biggest loan outstanding is the slip impact fee. I have no doubt that this outstanding $2 million will eventually be paid next 20 years, because that's what, when we built a new police building, we anticipated 20 year growth. Mm -hmm. So that means next, as long as you can pay next 20 years, we're good. So you can give that general fund is healthy. So we'll move on to the next slide and any questions. That will wrap up the general fund's budget presentation for 1920 budget. Now, just so everyone understands, we funded the construction of the police department in-house without paying interest on the loan outside. Right. I think that's a very important thing. Yes. We're loaning when, over, when a fund has the money that isn't used that in that particular year or the next two years, we can use that versus going onto the market and paying the bank absolutely two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars or whatever it is on a, on a loan that size. Yeah. So I think that's a real good use of our our funds as long as when it comes to the point where we need that addition to the sewer or the water system or or whatever, we've got it back paid back, so we we have that money back from there. Mm -hmm from the loan to the other account. Okay. Right. Since general fund has a, has a good reserve, if um, the money borrowed from the sewer fund, general can, fund can pay any time. If sewer fund in needs of money immediate, immediate needs. Okay. Yeah. So, if, unless there is any questions, I'm gonna move on to the next section, which is enterprise fund. So we will start with the water fund. In 1920, water fund sales revenues. This is the, um, the water that you use and we bill you every month. And this is the water sales revenue. So we have a budget of 2.332,000. Uh, 
And the next item is water connection fee. This is the development driven fee. It has nothing to do with the res residents. So this is the only development developers pay for this uh, connection fee. And this money is um, the strings attached. You cannot use this for operation, and we do not use this money for any operational maintenance. So that we budgeted 670,000. Um, and then next slide, it will show you the, uh, the pie chart of uh, water fund revenue. So in this water fund revenue, as you can see, the biggest slice of the pie is from uh, retail water utility, which takes 71%. And the water connection fee is 670000 So, and then uh, we have interest income and other revenue set. Other revenues include penalty and interest and all that. So, move on to the next slide. So this will give you, um, you can see how the water fund, the sales revenue has grown. It will show you, it'll show you the trend. Um, and you can see big dip in 15, 16, that's when big drought happened and you know, a lot of people conserve the water. You know, in that amazingly, our citizens has the <coughs> city and anyway, so that's when we have a substantial reduction in the water revenue, but eventually uh, it's growth. So this water growth is not actually fee increase. This is more, uh, a lot of times, I mean, of course, there's a small amount of uh, CPI increase included. However, mostly, it's the number of connection increase and also water usage. And now we're over drought and I see people, you know, using more water. So, that's what this will show you. That's a real important graph because cities, when there's a when there's serious drought and, and they, they cut back. You see the dip in the, in the revenue, but we didn't increase the the fee to the user to cover the drop in revenue. We were able to absorb that. Correct. Correct. And two things I want to point out. One is where this is. This slide does not talk about increasing rates at all. As a matter of fact, the city of Jasper is the lowest water rate in the community of Jasper when we compare ourselves to neighboring CSPs and. And otherwise, in our water sustainability project, formerly IPR, and our potable reviews, which we've been talking about, you've authorized us to move forward, will allow us to smooth these highs and lows, right? So if we have a drought, and we know we will sometime in the future, we're going to be less reliant on the state water system so that our residents will have a reliable source of water so we won't see these peaks and valleys. So two really good points to make. So next slide, please. Um, the next slide is connection fee. Connection fee is it's hard to predict. And this is the money that Jay brings in. It is development. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, it is just nature of this this uh, particular revenue, so. And these peaks and valleys are not to be concerned with, right? When Walmart comes along, you have to plug and play, right? You have to pay to connect to the water system, the sewer system, so on and so forth. So there's a large amount of money that's changed hands. When somebody builds a home, there's some money that changes hands. But this is all development driven. Again, this money is not used for operations. It's put in a separate account, and it's used to help us design, plan, and build future infrastructure that the new residents require. Very good point, Greg, thank you. And the next um, slide will show you uh, the water fund expense um, in a pie chart. So water fund total expenditure, we're looking at uh, close to $3 million. And of course, the um, number one the expenditure is the personnel cost, 41%. And number two is operating expense, 39%. And 20% uh, for capital purchase. <coughs> next slide. Um, in this um, slide, it shows uh, the personnel, three uh, big categories of uh, expenditures in under water funds. Number one, personnel cost, of course, number one. Number two is operating expenditures. You will see it, it's a slight uh, reduced next five years, going down. And then um, the capital projects um, at the bottom. So the next um, slide will show the five-year water fund expenses. And I will um, turn the mic over to Don. 
Thank you. Uh, just hitting some of the highlights here, uh, some of the things we've talked about. Uh, we talked about the, uh, the Groundwater Sustainability Project, or IPR, that's in there. Uh, we also are planning on doing a study for uh, the development of two new water wells. Uh, we really need one at least right now, and uh, we foresee needing a second one in the very near future. So we're gonna do a study to include two. And then we also uh, are planning to enter into a new uh, vehicle lease program uh, with Enterprise. This is kind of a shift in our uh, fleet management. And uh, we have several vehicles that absolutely have to be replaced this year. And rather than pay cash for them or take out a loan, we have an option to uh, enter into a lease program with them, which is uh, very beneficial. So you'll be seeing that at a future council meeting. Uh, the rest of these are kind of run-of-the-mill normal things. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. So next slide. So the next slide is um, the one that we just went down went through was five-year uh, water and expenses. The, you know, the biggest, mostly capital project items. And so next slide will show you 1920 immediate um, next year budget expenditures. Yeah, a lot of the same items here. Uh, you can see some water, at uh, least water rights, uh, meter replacements, and then continuing with the IPR project. So, um, okay, Ashley already, can you go one? Okay, there we go. So this this summary will show you the water operating fund. Um, so water operating fund, if you look at the yellow line uh, cross, you'll see 41,000, almost 42,000 surplus based on after 1920 um, operation and 2021, we will see 156,000 and so on and so forth. Uh, and then the, each year the surplus will grow and although, you know, um, the, the, all this big growth, a lot of people would think, why do we have so much surplus? Look at two years before. Mm -hmm. So when we have a big project or well failure or something, then unanticipated cost will um, eat up a lot of the reserve. So one earthquake can devastate our water system, mm -hmm. obviously, cost millions potentially. Uh, last month, the Mojave well went down. We spent nearly hundred thousand dollars getting the Mojave well back on, in service. So we must carry a reserve to be able to manage our water business correctly. So then, um, the ending cash and accounts receivable. I just wanted to let you know this is not only green block, but it also um, adds accounts receivable. Let's say if we close, you know, the war fund, that won't happen. But if we do. Uh, we will have 1.9 million um, cash plus accounts receivable. And after, at the end of the fifth year, we are going to look at close to uh, 2,760,000 surplus. And this is very healthy for water operation. And especially, I'm sure that Don can uh, tell you this, but certain in our old area in the, um, of the town, the pipeline is getting old. So, you know, this can be at any time. Um, next slide. So that was the operating fund. Next slide is connection fee fund. This connection fee fund, like Greg has mentioned, this, this is uh, restricted only for capacity <coughs> increase projects. So, um, you know, in this, you know, down went over the bullet points. In 2020-21, we will have we budgeted 1,150,000 for new well and 22-23, another million dollar for a new well. So those two years, you will see negative numbers. And but like Connection Fee Fund is, although we budget and Jay and I, every year we both, we, you know, we try our best to make the best conservative uh, budget for connection fees, but this is still a very wild card. Next slide, please. And this is a 1920 water fund summary. The operation, 
operating funds as well as collection fee fund together. And um, other than the second year, 2021, 227,000 negative, every year is positive. So this is the year that we will be using our um, the reserve. But if, if you look at very um, ending number cash balance, it's still very positive. So that is a good news. So I'll mention this again when we get into the sewer side, but uh, that, that ending cash balance is really important for us to be able to do some of these capital improvements uh, just through cash and not to have to go out and get funding or uh, a loan from somewhere or even borrow it from ourselves. These these funds are, are healthy and in good shape to be able to uh, maintain a reliable and safe uh, water operating system. So in, in to add to Don's comment, if we even go out and borrow money, if we don't have strong, healthy revenue stream, we will not be able to borrow any money. Like when you go to bank to borrow money, you have to have certain asset where otherwise they won't give you any money. So, so you know. And they always study how healthy we are. Next slide, please. So we will move on to sewer funds. And the budget is 2019-20 uh, sewer service charge. This is the sewer fees that you pay monthly to the city is two million uh, seventy-seven thousand, and connection fee revenue is one million twenty-seven thousand. So you will see you will see a lot of pie chart. <laughs> this is one, and in under uh, sewer fund, um, we budgeted what well, we budgeted three point three million four hundred eighty-three thousand, and. Um, so in this revenue, uh, sewer service utility takes the 60%, which is 2,077,000. And number two is connection fee is 30%, 1,027,000. And you know, number three is uh, the bond and you know, loan pro the, the loan proceeds that we are anticipating. And uh, next slide. So this will show you, just like water fund, sewer uh, service fee growth. Um, Sewer fund, other than, um, sewer fund is older residential has flat fees. You pay the same amount of money to the city every month. Whereas um, the business and commercial, they fluctuate depending on how much water they spend. So, um, and this will show you the picture of uh, gradual growth. So next slide is, oh, of course, um, its connection fee is hard to predict and it goes up and down, and you know, it's just nature of the fee uh, revenue, so it is what it is. And next slide, please. And so um, we will move on to uh, sewer fund expenses from revenue. So in 1920, we budgeted um, 3,295,000 total um, sewer fund expense, and in that, operating expend expenditures takes 53% of total expenditures in 1920, 1.7 million, and personnel cost takes 32%, and capital purchase, uh, 15%. Next slide. So this will show you, um, you know, it'll give you the good picture of operating service, you know, the revenue for um, 18, 19, and 1920. 2021, you can see there is a big chunk up there, and Don has some special project that he has to spend his money, and then it'll go down and it'll let it off for operating, which is a red line. And uh, of course, personal cost has a great, gradual increase, and the capital project up and it goes up and down, of course. And next item. So just like we did in the water fund, we have five years work fund uh, the bullet points. And Don will take over. <coughs> yes, thank you. Uh, so you can see the five-year plan. Uh, again, um, some consistent projects here. The IPR project is uh, on here again. We, we have our vehicle leasing program, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, we do have budgeted for the replacement of a street sweeper, which will happen this year, and then a sewer cleaning machine, 
uh, replacement of, of our existing ones. So those are kind of some of the highlights. If you go to the next slide, looking at the uh, 1920 budget, you see a lot of very uh, exciting wastewater treatment plant <laughs> equipment repairs and replacements. Uh, there's just a lot of maintenance that's, that's required there at the plant, uh, a lot of deferred maintenance from previous years. So we'll be working through all of those items and then uh, you can see the actual budget for next year on the other items we mentioned before, the vehicle leasing, the uh, IPR. I'd be happy to answer any questions about any of those. Two things I'd like to highlight. One is, maybe if you flip back one slide, please, actually. The sewer cleaning machine, so our, our wastewater treatment is not just a plant, right? There's an entire network within the city, so we have to keep those lines clear. All the feeder lines that feed into the wastewater treatment. So the sewer cleaning machine is a, actually it's kind of a hydro jet type thing with a camera, and it goes in and keeps the lines clean and clear so that we don't have any sewer backups. And the other is uh, the bond, the 2004 bond debt. So you look at 2020, uh, 20, 2021. We're going to be debt free in the wastewater treatment world in 21. Nice. That's really exciting. Debt free. I would so very exciting. Well, for for this particular for the, for the outstanding bonds. <laughs> this bond, right? Don't now we'll probably <laughs> add a little debt yeah. as we move forward with our water sustainability project, but that's going to depend on what we can cash flow and what we can get in the form of forgivable loans and our grants. So good, good news. Yeah, the, the goal there is to obviously minimize that or hopefully get away without having to do any right, debt service on that project. And if you do have a, uh, a time when you need a bond, when you're in such good health financially, you get a better rate. Sounds right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Marsh, um, I used to live up in the Sarlo, <coughs> off Sarlo, and there's water lines breaking all the time. Now, yes. is that from the developer, or who's responsible for that? Well, who's responsible for causing the leak, or who's for repairing the leak? I mean, it's apparently the system that falls under the water water department. We are constantly fixing leaks. Uh, throughout the city, um, unfortunately, many of the leaks that we repair are in the newer developments, believe it or not, and it really comes down to installation. Do, do we, do we, when I used to run a backhoe, you know, when you would install water lines, you know, you had to put sand and stuff, and when I saw them working the lines on Scarlet Oak, there are so many rocks, and, you know, I, I think, I think that we should, have, you know, there, some of that is our inspection, are we doing that? With, you know, we have a lot of these new development kind of developments coming up. Are we really spending time on the backfill that we need to make sure that they're doing it properly? Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. You've arrived on the reason why we have yeah, plastic polyethylene lines, which is what our standard is, which is a good standard, and rocks don't do well with each other next to each other over time. They'll, uh, they'll rub each other until the water line breaks. Uh, it is an inspection issue. Uh, we are responsible because we inspected it and we buried it all and we accepted it all and then they started breaking. It's kind of a sequencing. If, if they break before the one year warranty period, then we're not responsible, but that's not how that happened. Um, subsequent to that, and that was probably 10 years ago, we already made major structural changes in the way we do inspection. It also highlights why I need an engineering standards update. Our standards already include SAM. We, we folded that into the standards after learning that lesson 10 years ago, but it is the reason why it's important to invest in keeping your standards up to date, because as you learn lessons, sometimes easy to be learned from other agencies and sometimes learned the hard way, you want to make sure that, that what the standard book looks like works, and then um, we'll see. If we have a full-time inspector, Jason White, who works for me for doing public works inspection. Um, he is a, he's a, a veteran at this point in what he does, um, but Housing tract development is extensive inspection. Um, and if we have a major housing tract balloon and move forward, I suspect I will be here asking you guys to allow me to bring consultant inspection in um, to, to cover that workload. Because I'm not, 
my philosophy is that we, we can't go without detailed inspection for this very reason. So your only two choices are either provide the inspection or roll the dice. Uh, even inspection is a little bit of rolling the dice, it's not perfect. Um, but uh, my philosophy is we do the inspection, we make the developer pay for that inspection, uh, which is standard fare, and we do our best to, to avoid ever having that kind of situation happen again. So is that standard operating procedure one year warranty? Yes, that's so, yeah. that is a industry standard is one year and yeah, there's little you can do about that. We do get a bond from them, from the contract or from the developer for that one year period of time. But the number one, if you want my philosophy, then it, you've arrived on it. The number one way to avoid a uh, albatross of, of maintenance expense is to, to put the time and effort into the inspection, put quality, pay for quality people, and put quality people on the street that know what they're doing and pay attention. Uh, so even still, I always will tell people, like, you can't expect perfection. We don't see every single thing that gets buried, but the goal is to, to watch 95% of it and, uh, and catch everything you can. Thank you. I'm sharing with your frustration. <laughs> it's we're out there every week fixing fixing leaks. Um, for in, in in many cases five or six a week. You know the contractors are responsible. They're, they've got these guys out there that are, don't care. And I see how they backfill. You know being in construction before and seeing how they backfill. Uh, it's just who's ultimately responsible for it. I've got plenty of stories to share if you're interested. <laughs> so. Thank you. Tyler. Oh, yeah, Tyler. yeah, Tyler's more than me. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> we'll move on to the next slide. So this will show you uh, sewer operating fund. So we will, like I did from with the other funds, I will go over net budgetary fund balance. So after 1920 operation, we are looking at negative 519,000. So luckily we have a reserve that's gonna be able to, um, the, you know, the reserve and we are, we'll be able to cover that. So next two years, uh, we will have negative. Um, only because like Greg has mentioned, we will pay off. This is the last of two big chunk money that we have to pay for outstanding bonds. So Greg is absolutely true, you're right, for in operating fund, we will have debt free. We will have little lease payment, this and that, but major, we don't have any money owed under operating fund. Connection fee fund is different story yeah. for the new capacity. But as far as operating fund is concerned, we are, you know, we're gonna be fine. So next to, um, even 2020-21, if you look at, we will have, we are looking at like 49,000 negative, but sort of operating funds will be negative. However, if you look at connection fee fund, we'll have plenty of money, then that will cover for that year. And then we can move on. So however, at the end of fifth year, we're looking at over um, close to 306,000 positive. And you know, I, I have no doubt that we will uh, the build more fund as we go in the SWAR uh, fund. So 1920 SWAR um, connection fee um, fund. So connection, SWAR connection uh, fee fund has, is very healthy. Um, as much as the SWAR connection fee fund is healthy, I have um, witnessed firsthand how much it cost to build a new plant. <laughs> and so, although it looks very good, doesn't mean that we're not going to be able to, you know, we're not going to spend this money in one project. So, but still, it's it's much better to have this situation than the negative. That there are certain cities I have seen that they have to increase 300 percent of sewer fees just to in order to to accommodate their capacity increase. And plus, that is real. And plus. Um, you know, without certain revenue stream, there is no, uh, the people, would you buy the bond that knowing that that fund is gonna suffer? Yeah. So that's not gonna happen. So in the store connection fee funds, at the end of fifth year, we're looking at 7,683,000 um, positive. So next slide. Oh, I would like to add again, I'll just point out that the same as the water is that you know, a good portion of these funds can be used to help fund our IPR project. Uh, 
<clears throat> there, we are also, in the next year, we'll be putting together a capital expenditure plan for sewer that will identify other projects within the plant that are, are required for increasing capacity and, and reliability of the wastewater treatment plant, aside from the groundwater sustainability portion. So uh, <clears throat> don't get too excited that that fund is going to be super fat in five years. We'll, we'll be spending that money going forward. So. Okay. And then the next slide will show you the combination of sewer operating funds and connection fees. So if you look at the bottom number, although next in 2020-21, operating funds will have negative cash, and because of, of um, the healthy uh, the connection fee fund, there's no problem that we can subsidize for that just one year, and next year that um, we have no problem. Okay, question? Yeah. Overall, the big picture on our wastewater plant uh, at, with this major development coming in, how many homes? About a thousand, potentially over a number of years. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, stick your finger in the air. Yeah. Uh, where are we at our capacity, current capacity of the plant? I believe we, just off the top of my head, we have about, uh, in theory, 30% uh, of our capacity left. So, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the, <laughs> the groundwater sustainability project is going to analyze that to make sure where we're actually truly at with the plant capacity. Yeah, and, and that's why I'd say in theory, you know, if you take just the, the nameplate capacity of the plant versus where we're operating right now, yeah. it's about 30%. Um, under capacity right now. We're not 100% convinced that we can actually operate at the nameplate capacity. Right. So um, that's part of the study that we're going to be doing with IPR. Uh, so I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, just in the big picture, how many how many dwelling units are we servicing now with a potential of, but what does 30 percent mean of of what we have what's the number we're servicing we would be right there right at the maximum capacity of the plant so so dan i think the question is yeah. so a thousand new homes before you hit capacity yeah that number maybe sounds if i'm truly ballparking it yeah but the state as a reminder to all of you guys the state requires that when you hit 80 percent plant capacity that you begin the form process of planning your plant capacity increase. The state mandates that so that agencies don't stick their head in the sand and find themselves suddenly unable to, to treat wastewater that's coming down the pipe. So that's, I think, what we're talking about. We're also, uh, so you guys, you authorized a fairly sizable review of the water and sewer models, uh, you know, about eight months to a year ago. We've had a few hiccups in delivering that. We've found a lot of things, which was the whole point of the study. But hopefully in the next few months, we'll be giving you the presentation on what we found um, and, and talking about all of these issues like where do we go from here what is the next logical step how much is it going to cost how are we going to pay for it in short we are diligently working on a managing the budget that we have now but also b continuing that 5 10 15 year planning horizon so that we we're always in a nice and healthy position so this is all standard fare you know better than probably most you've been through years of it with the city but uh, well the question will be or already has it. What are we doing with these thousand homes? Are we looking at new streets? Are we, are we planning for this? Are we planning for increased capacity, water, and sewer? And the answer is yes. yes. And I think the study that's coming up will be very good. And I think he will be very uh, good at making sure the public is aware that we are planning. And the answer is absolutely yes. And it's a funny business, you know, when you're in the freshwater and wastewater business, you want to be ahead of the game, but not too far ahead, but not behind. So you want to be just riding the wave, if you will. And when we spend money on design and drilling new water wells, when we spend money on increasing capacity at the plant, you want to make sure you're not over obligating or under obligating, but we will never issue a building permit for something that we cannot serve. Okay. Right? It will never happen. So Sage Ranch is a good project. Uh, will it be two years, four, six, eight, ten years? So many variables. We're working closely with the developer and all the other developers that, that come in CJ and, and we understand their requirements, their timelines, their schedules, 
their budgets hand in hand with our schedules and our budgets. Right? And the key takeaway when people are saying when you're adding a thousand homes, they are paying for the for the new part of the sewer plant, the addition. If you, if you, uh, it's that that other addition to the physical plant. If it's another tank or pond or whatever it is that processes that, current taxpayers are whole now and will be in the future because those new residents will pay for the for the increase. That's the that's, that's, that's the sewer and water connection fee funds. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. that's a real key thing for key to key in on. <laughs> when we go down this process, I think yeah. it's real important though, that's part of transparency is showing the public that you're in good shape, healthy uh, with your finances and that you're, and we're budgeting for future expenditures. So, yeah. All right. If I, if, let me put the number to just to illustrate it to you. If it's a thousand homes, our current connection fee is about 72, 7,300 a home. If they all build, that would be $7.3 million that would go into the sewer connection fee fund and then is available to engineering and public works to build plant capacity to, to provide that. So that's, that is in a nutshell how we fund this, why we have those fees, why developers, oh, I can't, you know, but I mean, the, the city has great, solid, measured growth. You know, that's, that's where we're, to Greg's point, where we're trying to land is in that little sweet spot between uh, you know, growing in a healthy way, not growing too fast, not stagnating, and making sure that our facilities sort of track with that the best we can. So, yes, it keeps me up at night sometimes, but that's, you know, that's what we do. That's, anyway, so that's what's reflected here. Thank you. Okay, now we will move on to airport funds. In 1920, Airport operations revenue is a budget is six hundred and fifty five thousand seven hundred and seventeen. And whereas the uh, the operation operations operating expenses seven hundred and twenty-four thousand. So we will move on to the next slide. Um, it will show the pie chart of um, revenue in uh, airport operation plan. So number one, the first um, the revenue is fuel sales. So although uh, number one revenue is fuel sales, also number one expenditure is fuel sales mm -hmm. um, because it's eight and a half very much other than um, ten percent or so. And number two is hangar fees, and number three is the property lease. This in this uh, we have like a tower lease and. The sewer fund pays for um, alfalfa. We don't even grow alfalfa anymore, but then the, the ground lease. Billboards, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Then the fourth item um, in uh, operations revenue is um, operating transfer in. This is the money will be transferred in from general fund, in 111,000 from general fund in 2019 20. The next slide will show you. Um, the revenue, and uh, that is the black, and the red is the expense, and the, I mean, it looks like black, but it's like purple, very bottom with a triangle uh, pointer. That is the revenue net of general fund subsidy. So in 2016-17, there's a big spike. And that's because when uh, $1.4 million was uh, forgiven, actually, through uh, in a method of transferring uh, the fund to airport from general fund. We'll move on to the next slide. So this one will show you, um, this one doesn't show net of uh, general fund subsidy. This is just pure uh, revenue versus expenses. So it looks like the, the airport, the revenue is very close to expenses only because subsidy from general fund. So next slide will show you the pie chart of airport operation expenses, 723,784 budgeted. So number one um, expenditure in uh, airport operation is uh, the personnel cost, 41%. And number two is operating expenses, 31%. 
and fuel purchase is 26% um, percent of the total uh, airport uh, expenses. <coughs> In 1920, airport operation expenditure, uh, the line graph is, you can see it, and there was a big spike in um, 22, 23, it's because of the airport project, taxway project. Then we, we will move on to the next slide. The airport um, operating fund summary. So, although uh, if you look at the yellow, we didn't even bother for cash flow because airport funds runs in negative. And uh, like the way we designed this budget is for 1920, the, the, there, there will be 111,000 transfer that will cover for whatever the negative funds that we'll, we will see as the end of um, 1819. So it is like, if you look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight and seventh, six and seventh, you can see operating transferring. That is for the property tax. So, you know, uh, the airplane, this is how much airport fund bring in as a property tax using from the, the, the plane itself. But actually, this money belongs to the general fund, but the general fund it used to be higher than 600, but lately <coughs> we have seen very little, and probably because a lot of airplanes are depreciated and are not, so. And so we only see 600. Um, and then uh, transfer in, the next, next line is uh, due to the cash shortage. So if you look at um, 1920, it's 111,000. 2021, 179. 21, 22 is 142. If you look at all the way to 26, we're looking at 382,000. It's because um, general fund subsidy. Yes, general fund subsidy. Yes, it's a substantial. It's because of the project. Let's have a conversation right here. <laughs> I think the, the council and the residents, when you're spending. 111,000 a year, and the next year 179, 142, 197, 300. That would fill a lot of potholes outside the fence. How are we going to get the airport whole? There's a value to the airport. We all understand that, but that fund is has never, and they will argue all the every day, all day long that that's not true. But the numbers don't lie. So how do we get the airport fund revenue up? because the expenses are, are probably going to stay about the same uh, as far as the uh, operating expense and personnel, they're fairly flat, except for a, when you have a capital expenditure. Those, those items are, are flat. So how, what's the future revenue and everyone else chime in. Am I? No, you're, you're right on. We, okay. we, we can't continue with that right off of 1.4 million. That would have paved some alleys until we fixed a lot more streets. And we're putting it at the airport. We understand the value there, but people are asking, why are you spending it there and not on my street? So what are we doing? Where are we going? Phil, how many times have you heard that argument? You've been on this council longer than I've been here. And every time you try to bring that up, the room is full. Yep. And they have more arguments against your point than you're bringing up right now. There's other revenues, there's other issues that they bring up that you're not bringing up. Well, let's talk about those. You can't do it without them here. Okay. I mean, you can do it, but you're not going to have an honest conversation. Okay. So the, the airport, and I'll, I'm going to defer to Ashley here in, in a moment. Um, obviously, it's an asset for our city, for our community, and for our formation. If you go back to the pie chart, Ashley, please, you can look at our revenue, operations revenue. Hangar fees, $153,000. Keep going back. That's the dirt that we lease to um, individuals for the, you know, their hand that's on top of our dirt, if you will. Industrial park land lease, that's the proven lease, that's the airport industrial park as you enter the airport on the left side. Um, fuel sales, that's just an end, and California Airport aid, that's uh, Caltrans, because we have an airport and Caltrans 
for some reason has an aeronautical arm, they give us ten thousand dollars in a in a grant, um, so on and so forth. So the revenue is very straightforward: billboards, some cell phone tower uses. You know, we have we have space for hangers to be uh, hangers to be built, if you will. But it takes many, many years to, if you build a hangar, for that to pencil out before it'll pay for itself, right? Even though it's just a metal building, it takes 10, 20, 30 years in some cases to amortize and before you start getting profit. So there's no big rush in the general aviation world to build a lot of hangars, right? Some will say there is, and I would counter that and say there is not. If there was, they would be here, right? Um, the biggest, the, the debt or the, the red that we're seeing is because of the airport improvement projects, right? Operating expenses, revenue in, operating out, that's pretty manageable. But whenever we have, whenever we receive a grant from the FAA and the airport taxiway relocation slash drainage project is over four million dollars, the FAA requires you to match that, say 10%. That's $400,000, plus the management, plus you know the, the consultants that we have to hire, and so on and so forth. So that's half a million dollars that we have to find, dig deep. And the airport and price fund does not have $500,000, so the, the general fund tends to subsidize that. Or it, does, it just does, it doesn't tend to. It does, bottom line. Um, if there were more to do, we would do it. I know it's been talked about for decades, but um, there's, if somebody has an idea, I'm all ears. Right? I, I come from an aviation background, and general aviation, I'll say, is not thriving. It's surviving. Now, our, our airport is very essential, you know, with the emergency operations potentially, so on and so forth. We'll never argue that. That's why we keep it open, right? We have an obligation and want to do that. One of the things that we had discussed and decided, council decided a couple years ago, was the event center. But the event center was poised to bring in significant revenue to the airport enterprise fund. Right, we were going to develop it with a banquet center, with enhanced rodeo grounds, all kinds of things that would benefit the community in the recreational world, but also bring revenue to the airport. That was kibosh. Right, we started down that road. We spent a lot of money, a couple hundred thousand dollars actually, and that's been put on hold. The FAA does not give you money for operations. It's ours. Now we could look at giving it back to the county of Kern. We could we could look at a couple different things, but there's not a lot to do or say. That's the bottom line. The revenue needs to increase, so should we not go down that avenue of because there's still a value to the airport. There's a value to the community. It's hard to put soft dollar value on it. So if, if, it's, if it's not paying its way, then shouldn't we go toward that event center again? And Maybe so. Here's what I'd like to suggest. You know, and this is a, you know, the, the airport is in your district. Times Beach Society Pilots, TSC, they're a very active group. Why don't we set up a meeting with you, Mr. Smith, Ashley, and Times Beach Society Pilots and brainstorm some things? Yeah. Where are we now, and where could we go? So why don't we try to set something up in the next month or so? And we'll have that, I don't want to use the word committee, but uh, we can have an informal Task meeting force. And, and talk about well, I think that'd go a long way versus just looking at, at the, the bottom line here. And, what would, and let's just take that part of the budget out, and we can sit down and talk and say, if you were running a business, Texas Society Pilots Group, how would you do it? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. We'll do it. Let's, Let's say, it you know, where would you, and where would you get the money to invest to get that added re revenue? Because you've got to do something. You can't just pull it out of thin air. So I think it's time to, uh, we'll talk to them. We're having a good uh, rapport with them right now. I think it'd be good to sit down with them. And this is not a bashing statement. It's just a, Fact of life. 
and you, when you start seeing it where you've ripped off that much money and then you're just trending up and up and up again, I think the public wants to see what the value is to everyone else for, for spending that money there when they're saying my street is in bad shape. That's what, that's what I'm getting in my territory, in my uh, district. So anyone else? I have. I agree with you wholeheartedly. And I'm, I've sat here before and said, give it back. If that's the only solution we can come up with. And sure I can. Yeah, you shouldn't. <laughs> but, but my point is that um, we either have to all play and, and try and play to, to make things better, or, or we shouldn't be in the airport business. I think we, I think we can figure it out. I really do. Our, our aviation community in this area, in this region, is second to none in the world. Our airport matters. It matters a lot. And I think we can figure it out. I really do. But I think they need to hear that it matters. But they also need to hear that we want their input on how to fix this. Okay, so if I may, from a business standpoint, I just opened conversations with Team California um, at ICSC. Team California does a lot of manufacturing, even aviation business, site selection throughout the state of California. And they go sort of on our behalf through our membership with the Greater Valley Valley Economic Alliance. They go on our behalf to trade shows all over the country. Um, and so we started the conversation a little bit about our airport. Um, unfortunately, our runway size limits some of the aviation businesses that they've been able to locate, people servicing citation jets, that kind of thing. We don't have much space to, to land. Um, those, but there are some potentials down the road. Now again, that takes development costs on the north side or even other places, um, and that's a substantial investment. Sometimes folks are leery about doing that type of business in California, but we have opened those conversations and looking forward to a potential site visit in the near future with Team California. Good, thank you. It's tough, it's leased property. Banks don't like leased property. Owners of companies typically don't prefer leased property. They want to own. They want to own, especially when you're talking about manufacturing. Right? So, but um, we'll set up a meeting with Mr. Smith, Ashley, Tattoo Society, Pines, and anybody open to the public, obviously. And we'll, uh, we'll start this conversation. Thank you. You know, um, Mojave Airport. Uh, some people who had vision in Mojave went to Washington, D.C. and said, you know, we want our airport, and they worked to, to organize an airport district, had a vote, got some money. But during the early days, they did things like um, the grape crop is rotting in Arvin and Bakersfield. So they brought half a runway of grapes over and put them out to let them dry and got some money. And my only point at that is, you could do different things sometimes. Mm -hmm. And everybody doesn't always have to say, oh, no, 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 we can't do that because we're an airport. Well, that day, it was a great drying uh, facility. So, you know, all I'm saying is you have to have a little vision for the future. Well, we've had a lot of vision, and we've had a lot of businesses come and go. Mm -hmm. um, but quite frankly, the tenants and users <coughs> have not right. uh, come along with them. For instance, we had a guy that was teaching people how to ride motorcycles and get their motorcycle license. He was paying his revenue. I could, we have several examples of those sorts of things, but we need to diversify. And even the FAA will tell you, diversify, right? We get it. And that's really what we try to do with the events in a big way. And we can restart those conversations and those projects. Okay. okay, so we'll move on to, um, well, thank you for your comments, though. It's very, um, very important subject to discuss. Um, and then next slide, we show you um, the airport project event. So this, in this sheet, you, you, you will see um, kind of project that we will be doing. So next um, five years, we're looking at, what is it? Five. Six, close to you know six seven million dollars project that it's budgeted mm -hmm. yeah so that's why channel fund is subsidizing substantial amount of money and 
So the next sheet, please. Then it will show you um, the uh, airport operation, operating fund and the project fund combined. And in this uh, sheet, you can you can draw a line from look at operating transfer in shortage. That's under revenue. You will see that is the same amount as ending cash balance of 2018-19. So it will show like this. And then 2020-21, $179,000. If you look at very bottom number of 2019-20, $179,000. So we're covering the deficit of prior year immediately. Mm -hmm. And we will move on to the next slide. That will take that that will take us to refuse fund. So basically, as you know, the refuse service trash pickup service is we're contracting with waste management, and the city does the billing service. And the city receives 10% of um, total billings, and so um, the all the amount that we collected from the older residents are captured under revenue as a refuse collection fees, recycling fees, and penalty and interest and whatever. And now on the expenditure side, as you can see it, we pay a chunk of money to uh, waste management for the refuse payment to waste management recycle uh, payment. So this is like 90% of the total revenue we collect, we pay back to them. And, and um, so at the end of 1920, we're looking at 5,600 positive, and uh, next five years, you will see some negative funds, but that's okay, because in this fund, this one has some reserve, and I would not worry too much about these negative numbers. And other than, because the city, city does not spend, other than overhead um, service, we don't spend any actual operating expenditure, so that's why I'm saying that I would not worry too much about this negative fund. So, you know, we can actually, when we events were servicing, they only paid 6.5%, and intentionally, I was not able to allocate the true cost. But now, uh, we, will, uh, we will do that. So next slide, it will show you the total, um, the, you know, operating expenses, and personal cost, and the capital project, just like we did for all the other funds. Mm. So next slide. We will move on to transit fund. So transit fund revenue, this is actually a dial, dial of ride operation. <laughs> so money we receive is from um, PDA, uh, Transportation Development Act uh, the fund. It's, it works, um, you know, uh, we receive from current call. This is the money. This TDA fund is from many different combinations that the source of fund is. And then the money all comes through the Kronkow, and Kronkow allocates that per capita. Again, this is um, the population-based allocation. So all the money we receive in, in TDA, Article 4 and 6.5, and STAF. STAF is, we can only 100% use transit, but LTF, Local Transit Fund, we have, we can, we can use it for transit first, and then whatever left over, we can use it for street and road. So that's the money we use, um, along with gas tax for the road maintenance. So in transit funds, uh, we're looking at 367,734 revenue in 1920, and uh, 318,000 uh, expense. So you will see 49. So bottom line is, in transit funds, it should be, ends, it should be zero, mm -hmm. plus and minus. Only 40, 49,000, uh, the plus is, surplus is intended, is because if you look at very, um, the last line on um, the mid-year 1819, you see negative 49,000, so that's just to pay for that negative fund. But other than that, next five years is all uh, break even. And just for your uh, the visual help, next slide. You know, uh, of course, uh, it has the broken down, the expenditures were broken down into two personnel and operating expense. The next slide, please. We will move on to capital projects. And, you know, I'm very happy to, uh, this, this slide, this slide is uh, the, 
the radio. Um, no, not radio. This is the uh, the all other funds other than general fund and enterprise fund. And this is a special revenue plus the capital projects. And I am very happy to report that um, we have substantial um, amount of money we're spending on capital projects. And I can tell you the comments that our auditor made, the size of the university, you guys are having tremendous amount of capital projects. And you guys take a lot of grants. So I'll get, I would like to give credit to from today. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll take over. <laughs> okay, so the next slide, uh, if you don't mind, just uh, briefly is a list of the projects. Uh, first of all, you'll see in years 21 through 24 that we don't budget anything um, on our grant funded capital projects, at least. We do have a, um, a CIP, a capital improvement program, where, we're, uh, where we track uh, projects that's not memorialized in the budget because in many cases we're putting down projects that aren't yet funded and we're just keeping an eye out for ways to fund them. Um, so instead we try to budget with reliability the next couple of years. Um, and so the projects you're going to see here, the big one is the rail corridor pedestrian safety project in the next couple of years. That's the improvements to the grade crossings in town and all the fencing that I've been working on. There's an item on tonight's agenda on that regard. Um, We'll also be doing a small extension of the Antelope Run bike path. Um, the Cherry Lane Sidewalks project, which we awarded last council meeting, is here. Um, the PD parking lot should be wrapping up by then. So another thing to note, too, is it's also difficult to budget these or display them in a manner that's easy for people to understand because we run a budget from July 1st through June 30th of every year. The capital projects don't care what day it is you know like we we execute the projects more based upon season and our ability to get them through the pipeline and deliver them than anything else and so for instance the cherry lane sidewalks project as you well know is not 260,000 it's 460,000 and so that number was based upon how much money we think we'll expend before June 30th, that will go on the 18-19 budget, and then the remainder will be in 19-20. And so I'm sort of constantly updating these numbers and working with Hannah. That number probably won't end up being the exact right number. Right. Um, but uh, the, but the, the corresponding revenue that comes with the grants just track with the expenditure. So it all, right. if I'm doing it right, it, it washes out in the end. Um, and so you'll also see the downtown Tatchby Boulevard rehab project. That bids next week. That's uh, paving uh, several additional blocks on Tatchby Boulevard. Um, the urban greening grant is expected to be executed largely in the next two years, um, as well as the recent ATP grant that we received for Snyder um, is expected to be executed in 1920 and 2021. So um, this does not reflect um, any plans that we might have for utilities that might ultimately become. The other thing that is not here is projects that aren't yet a capital project are not on this list. So until we make a formal decision come to you and go, we have 700,000 in the water fund, we wish to build a pipeline from A to B, you guys say yes, then it becomes a capital project and gets budgeted as such. So um, anyway, these are the projects that we have uh, slated right now for 19-20-21. I guarantee you they'll be different in mid-year and they'll be different again next year and that's just the changing nature of what we do. But uh, anyway, I'm happy to answer any questions about what we foresee as of today. Thank you. So I just want to make one comment. So if you look at um, is that page one or page two? Continued, okay. So if you look at um, the five-year total, the green, and you will see 11 million for a five-year project, but I, I'm sure after this, if we complete 23, 24, it'll be way more than 11 million because Jay only budgets something that he's certain. So, you know, from track record, he keep bringing more revenues and we keep producing more capital projects, so I'm very certain it's going to be absolutely more than 11 million. Um, so next slide, please. So next slide is um, one to one last section of this budget presentation. So it's going to be landscape, light industry, and uh, drainage. Drainage will come uh, next sheet. So we have, how many do we have? 13 um, landscape lighting district out of 13, seven, eight districts are in negative, meaning 
A couple of years ago, General Fent uh, wrote off to close to 280,000 that subsidized for the LLDs. Thank God that our general fund is so healthy. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm not sure what, what could happen to this. Um, but anyway, so because of this, and you will see um, the you know, Cody will bring a um, agenda item at 6 o'clock council meeting to help this negative funding. So next is one last, is a DBAD is drainage basin assessment district. So we do, as of now, we have two uh, drainage basin assessment district, and those are two very healthy, so far so good. So that will um, you know, wrap up on the budget presentation, and I'm very pleased to present this budget to you, council members. Thank you. Any questions? More comments. I'm going to get back to it. Thank you, Hannah, and all the department heads, and all the city employees, and all the residents of this great city. We have, um, like I said, we have you know, the truth um, is in putting here. The numbers speak for themselves. We have balanced budgets. We have um, great, strong revenues. We conservatively budget, and we don't overspend. So that's our presentation for this evening. So what we'd like to do is ask your permission to adopt the proposed resolution adopting adopting the city of Tatchy's budget for the fiscal year 2019-20 and preliminary budget for fiscal years 2021, 2021-22, 2022-23, and 23-24. Can we can do that? With one motion. All right, I'll entertain a motion as presented by staff. I'll second it. Did you first? <laughs> I was first. Oh, you're the second. Oh, okay. okay. So I'll second it. Moved and seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Let the record show the vote was 4-0. Thank you. Thank you. And we're... Two more. Uh, I got lost. I'm not on the right agenda. So would you read it, please? <laughs> I don't so have, we don't next, have paper copies to start with. The next item uh, is appropriation limit. That was on consent. Yes. We did make a small error on our um, cover sheet for the agenda this evening. So we didn't make a motion for uh, any consent. Right. Item. So if you'd like, we just we can we can talk about it for a second. It's the appropriation limit. This is something that the state requires us to adopt every year. It's a calculation put forth by the state, and basically it says this is how much money you can pull in, and you can't exceed that. So uh, if there aren't any questions, and again, this is mandated by the state, this is dictated by the state and pushed down to us, and we are within our appropriation limitation, right? Yes. And so we would ask that you adopt the resolution establishing an appropriation limit pursuant to Article uh, uh, 1013 of the California Constitution Appealing Resolution 23-18. Motion on staff's recommendation. I have a second. I'll second it. Moved and seconded. As presented by staff, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Let the record show it was 4 0. Thank you. Yeah. So, one more. Yeah. So, next item on the agenda is um, the salary schedule adoption. So, um, as we are, um, you know, in this, the new budget, uh, we have, I am going to list what is included and um, any changes from uh, July 16, 2018 to resolution number 39-18 and any changes that made from that resolution. So, number one, four additional full-time employees, the, the lead landscape maintenance police officer and, I mean, four, it's just three, right? And an accounting problem, right? And three, um, the police technician, those are the, the new addition, okay? I mean, I mean, additional employees, I'm sorry. And then we have two transfer from part-time to full-time. The community engagement specialist and code enforcement officer. And there will be, there are two new positions created. Deputy Public Works Director and Public Works Analyst. And that job descriptions for these two positions are included. So number four, the number of pay steps for a sergeant and lieutenant 
are videos from 15 to 5 steps, just like we have mentioned by police officers. And then number five, a 3.6 CPI um, cost of uh, living adjustment is included for memorandum of understanding for um, public union. And number six, 3.6 COLA rates for employees represented by Catholic Police Officers Association will be dependent upon finalized MOU between the uh, city and the POA. And if there are any changes to that, we'll bring that back to you. With a memorandum of understanding approval by the council. And number seven, the number of pay steps for police officers and senior police officers will also uh, be dependent upon the finalization of MOU between the city and the union, the police officers union. So there's two items. And the fiscal impact. With all these changes included, in 2019-20, we are looking at 363,000 increase. This includes merits, CPI, and new missions, and additional employees. And the steps recommendation is number one, adopt a resolution amending the salary schedule as presented. And number two, approve job descriptions for Deputy Public Works Director and Public Works Administrative Analyst. All right. I'll so obtain a motion to approve. So moved. I have a second. Second. Pardon? Yes. Yes. As presented by staff? Yes. Yes. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Let the record show it was a four zero vote. And we will see y'all back at six o'clock. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Thank you. Thank you.